the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, I'm continuing with my reviews of the player cards in the City of Archives. We are looking at the Mystic and Survivor cards in the 4th Mythos pack in the Forgotten Age cycle. There are spoilers throughout if you uh, care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. There are two Mystic cards and uh, one Survivor card in this pack, and uh, no math to speak of for the uh, first time in uh, several packs, so uh, let's get started. The first Mystic card in the pack is the Crystalline Elder Sign. It's a three-cost asset that will set you back three experience points. It has a wild skill icon and the item relic and blessed traits. In order to play the Crystalline Elder Sign, you need to seal either the plus one or Elder Sign Chaos token on it. While the Crystalline Elder Sign is in play, you get plus one willpower, plus one intellect, plus one combat, and plus one agility. And the Crystalline Elder Sign will take up an accessory slot. When the uh, seal mechanic was unveiled in the uh, Forgotten Age cycle, uh, or the Forgotten Age Deluxe Box, excuse me, I expected that quite a few cards in the cycle would take advantage of it. I expected not only uh, Mystic cards, but also cards in other classes, as well as uh, Encounter cards to seal tokens left, right, and center. In the end, we received only three cards that uh, used the seal mechanic. Premonition in Heart of the Elders, Crystal and Elder Sign in this Mythos pack, and Seal of the Seventh Sign in uh, Shattered Aeons. I'm of uh, two minds on the Crystalline Elder Sign. On the uh, one hand, I like it. It's a uh, non-unique and it boosts all of your all of your stats. If you pick up a Relic Hunter from the Essex County Express, or you play uh, Dr. Ellie Horowitz from the Forgotten Age uh, Deluxe Expansion, you can have uh, two Crystalline Elder Signs in play, boosting all of your stats by two. You have to uh, seal two of the best tokens in the Chaos Bag to do it, uh, which probably won't make you many friends in multiplayer, uh, by the way, but a, a static uh, plus one or plus two boost to all of your stats is impressive. I say uh, Crystal and Elder Sign seems great because there aren't that many Mystic Investigators who are interested in leveraging a plus one stat boost across the board, especially in multiplayer where Investigators tend to... Uh, specialize. Take an investigator uh, like Agnes Baker, for example. Agnes has six willpower, three intellect, three combat, and four agility with a crystalline elder sign in play. Now, Agnes would certainly welcome the willpower boost and uh, possibly the agility boost as well. However, the intellect and combat boosts are pretty much wasted on her since she tends to investigate and fight with uh, willpower anyway. When you look at that that way, why would Agnes bother to pay three resources, three experience points, and seal one of the better tokens in the Chaos Bag for what really amounts to a plus one willpower bonus when uh, Holy Rosary from the core set will basically do the same thing for less resources, far less experience, and it will give you a uh, plus two sanity uh, to boost. I'd be willing to argue that uh, any mystic or off-class mystic who relies on Rite of Seeking, Shriveling, and Mists of Rillier to get the job done, that is uh, almost every mystic or off-class mystic that I've played or seen played recently, is uh, in the same boat. Crystal and Elder Sign seems fantastic at first glance, but uh, most of those stat boosts are going to go to waste on those type of mystics, for whom willpower is the end-all and be-all of stats. Now, there are several investigators who may be able to uh, leverage the Crystalline Elder Sign more effectively, but uh, most of those investigators aren't mystics. I'm uh, thinking of Ursula Downs, Jim Culver, and uh, Lola Hayes, investigators who don't necessarily need to rely on those uh, standard mystic tricks uh, to get by during a scenario. Ursula is a 4525 with a Crystalline Elder Sign in play, while Jim Culver is a 5443. Lola, in particular, would love to be able to become a mystic, drop a crystalline elder sign or two on the table, and then switch to a different role and uh, never look back. She could get a lot done as a 444 or a 5555 investigator. I uh, haven't played Marie Lambeau, and I understand she's actually coming out in uh, the Circle Undone, 
So I'm not entirely certain whether a build exists that uh, doesn't rely on uh, the mystic triad of Rite of Seeking, Shriveling, and uh, Mists of Rillier. But is, if there is, uh, Marie is a very respectable 5524 with a Crystalline Elder sign in play. So maybe there is there's something there that uh, players can experiment with. Now, Father Matteo is a special case since he is the only investigator of the bunch who can uh, put Crystalline Elder Sign in his deck at the start of the campaign because he does get that uh, five experience points. Now, he can only put one of them in his deck, but if he can get that down on the table early enough, he's a 5434, four, which is, is pretty decent. If you're interested in this type of deck, uh, Ian from Mythos Busters has been playing Father Matteo. Uh, Father Mateo build uh, live on Twitch that does use the uh, Crystalline Elder sign. At least it did uh, when I looked at the first episode. Personally, I haven't tried the uh, Crystalline Elder sign in Mateo, preferring to uh, stick to St. Hubert's Key for the willpower and intellect boosts. Now, Crystalline Elder sign may be a slightly better choice. Besides boosting combat and agility, the Crystalline Elder sign will likely seal the plus one token, which does slightly increase the odds of drawing an Elder Sign, which is obviously amazing uh, in Mateo. I did consider purchasing the Crystalline Elder Sign in uh, several iterations of the deck that I built. However, then I remembered there's a, uh, a better option. That brings me to the uh, another problem with Crystalline Elder Sign, namely that the uh, Key of Yeast exists. For just two more experience points, you get you get an accessory that can potentially boost uh, all of your stats by three. It also has four sanity and doesn't require you to seal one of the best uh, tokens in the Chaos Bag. I have played uh, Father Mateo with the Key of Ease and he seemed to perform a little more consistently during my playthroughs of the Untamed Wilds. It uh, didn't set uh, Mateo on fire as I'd hoped it would, but uh, it, he did seem to reach Act 3A a little more uh, frequently with the Key of Ease in play. Now, some would argue that the Key of Ease is uh, borders on broken, so it's really not fair to uh, compare it to the Crystalline Elder Sign. I don't necessarily agree that the Key is uh, broken, especially when you're playing it in a Mystic or off-class Mystic Investigator, since they have this annoying tendency of taking that surprise horror here and there, with cards like Shriveling or Ward of Protection. That uh, extra horror can make it very tricky to manage the uh, to manage the key, especially once you've got a, a couple horror on it, because then you're faced with the, uh, the choice, okay, do I play the Ward of Protection to cancel that treachery, or do I hang on to it? Because if I do, I'm gonna have to put that uh, horror on the key, which is uh, makes it that much more likely that the key is going to be discarded. Now, Crystalline Elder Sign isn't a bad card if you're playing a generalist investigator who can leverage all of those stat boosts. However, as long as the Key of Yeast is, is an option, I think the Crystalline Elder Sign is going to look like a suboptimal choice a lot of the time, especially if you're not playing somebody like Father Matteo and uh, you can't take the Crystalline Elder Sign at the beginning of the campaign. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the Crystalline Elder Sign uh, has the potential to be quite powerful in the right build, I think the problem here really lies with the Mystic card pool, which focuses uh, so heavily on effects that use willpower as a substitute for other stats. If we see a few cards geared towards a different type of Mystic, perhaps a more balanced Mystic who doesn't have to rely exclusively on willpower to get the job done, then the uh, Crystalline Elder Sign's stock will go up. I thought Father Matteo might be that mystic, but Matteo's deck building options are just so limited at the moment that he doesn't really have much choice but to lean heavily on cards like Rite of Seeking, Shriveling, and Mists of Relier. If uh, Father Matteo does need willpower, St. Hubert's Key, which also boosts his intellect, and uh, Holy Rosary are uh, considerably cheaper options. Or you can just cut to the chase and uh, pick up Ye of, Key of Yeast before the campaign begins and enjoy the uh, same benefits uh, without, uh, or even better benefits, because uh, you will can get up to plus three to all your stats and you don't have to seal uh, one of the better Chaos tokens to do it. The second Mystic card in the pack is Sacrifice. It's a free event that costs one experience point. It has a willpower skill icon and the ritual trait it has the game text, discard a mystic asset you control, then draw three cards and 
or gain three resources or any combination thereof. Now, if I uh, wanted to write a really short review for Sacrifice, I could simply say, drawing cards is good, resources are good, play this card. But uh, you guys have come to expect a little bit more from my reviews, so uh, here it goes. If you've uh, ever had the chance to play a Mystic Investigator, you know that it uh, can be a very expensive proposition. Much like uh, Guardians, Mystics have a lot of costly assets and uh, very few ways to generate resources besides uh, emergency cash. I've uh, played a lot of Father Mateo this cycle, and I always felt as though I was trying to cobble together enough resources to play Shriveling, St. Hubert's Key, and uh, Flashlight. That's uh, 10 resources right there, and that doesn't factor in the other assets I had in my deck, uh, such as Spirit Athame, the Codex of Ages, uh, or Mists of Rillier. It uh, probably didn't help matters that uh, I always seem to uh, draw Indebted as my weakness. Now, uh, David Renfield from Echoes of the Past is a uh, very powerful economic engine for mystics and uh, off-class mystics, but uh, he can be uh, quite tricky to use effectively, especially if you're unfamiliar with the ebb and flow of a scenario. You need to place uh, at least one doom on Renfield to generate resources, and uh, that one doom can really light a fire under the agenda deck unless you're confident that you can kill off Renfield at the right time. In my experience, uh, Mystics tend to be quite slow as they set up and uh, get all of their toys in play, and adding Doom uh, to cards in play, such as the Arcane Initiate or David Renfield, can make them feel even slower as they uh, struggle to keep up with the pace of the agenda deck. Now, Card Draw is uh, also in short supply in the Mystic card pool. Besides Arcane Initiate, there's uh, Father Mateo's special ability, to draw a card if he pulls an Elder Sign and uh, Quantum Flux. That's pretty much it. God forbid you uh, draw an Amnesia as your weakness because it will be very difficult indeed to rebuild your hand if you get to tag with that at the wrong time. Sacrifice addresses the uh, Mystic class's lack of card draw and resources. Drawing three cards, gaining three resources, or any combination thereof is obviously very, very good it's important to understand, however, that you're not coming out ahead if you play Sacrifice since you need to discard an asset and it's likely that asset cost you a pile of resources to put into play in the first place. However, I think you'll agree that it's better to get something rather than nothing for an asset that has outlived its usefulness and that's exactly what Sacrifice lets you do. I find it somewhat ironic given the art on the card that Sacrifice can be a uh, real lifesaver for Mystics. Imagine that you've got that copy of Shriveling in play with no charges on it. You've got another copy of Shriveling in your hand but no resources to play it. Sacrifice fixes this uh, predicament quickly so you don't need to spend an, an entire turn simply generating resources to play that second copy of Shriveling. Or perhaps you find yourself in a situation where flight is uh, preferable to fight, sacrificing that shriveling to play the astral travel in your hand makes a lot uh, of sense in this situation. I can think of uh, plenty of other uh, times where I would gladly exchange an asset in play for cards and or resources to play another card in my hand. Whenever an asset has uh, outlived its usefulness, sacrifice lets you turn that uh, disadvantage into an advantage. Now, Sacrifice is also a great way to deal with potentially dangerous allies such as the Arcane Initiate or uh, David Renfield, who we talked about earlier. Now, Mystic players usually try to kill off these allies before they cause the agenda to advance. Most players prefer to let an enemy or treachery do the dirty work for them so they can get that uh, the full benefit of, their, uh, of those allies' health and sanity. But if there are no treacheries or enemies in uh, sight, Sacrifice is uh, your other option to consider. You get to remove that to Doom from play and get a few cards or resources for your trouble. In this type of situation, playing Sacrifice is uh, really a win-win, even if you don't recover all of the resources you spent to, to put that asset into play in the first place. As I mentioned at the top of the review, card draw is, uh, and is great and uh, resources are great. Sacrifice gives Mystics and uh, Off-Class Mystics a way to generate both. You've got to, gener you've got to discard a uh, Mystic Asset to do it, but it's a relatively small price to pay uh, for the cards and resources, especially if those cards and resources will get you out of a jam. 
Mystics uh, don't have many ways to generate cards and or resources, so I expect to see uh, Sacrifice make the cut in a lot of uh, Mystic decks going forward. There is only one Survivor card in the pack, and that is on your own. It's a two-cost asset that costs three experience points. It has a willpower skill icon and the talent trait. It is limit one per investigator. It has the game text discard on your own if you control an asset that takes up an ally slot response when you play a survivor event exhaust on your own reduce the events cost by two now dark horse is one of the most popular survivor deck archetypes for a reason because uh, raising all of your skill values by one is extremely good especially in survivor however there is a catch you only get those skill value bonuses as long as you have no resources that can put to Dark Horse players in a bit of an awkward situation since most Survivor events cost resources. If you're uh, saving up resources in order to play an event, you're not getting your Dark Horse bonuses, and uh, that can be a problem. I've uh, lost track of how many times I've, been, uh, I've played a Dark Horse deck, and I've wanted to use some of those uh, great Survivor events, such as uh, Look What I Found and uh, Lucky and... Uh, resource management can be a serious issue. Now, Madame Labranche, a survivor ally from the Phantom of Truth, uh, can help you work around this problem since she can generate resources for you as a free triggered ability as long as you don't have any resources to begin with. Obviously, this works very well with uh, Dark Horse, which rewards you for not having resources. But uh, we'll discuss Madame Labranche a little later uh, in this review. Now, On Your Own lets, you, uh, lets an investigator play Dark Horse and Survivor events too. Basically, as long as uh, On Your Own is in play, you get to play one Survivor event for free uh, each round. The uh, only exception to this are Cunning Distraction and Will, Will to Survive from the core set, uh, True Survivor from Black Star's Rise, and Waylay from the Pallid Mask. Still... Uh, You've got 24 Survivor events to choose from, which is, uh, I think you'll agree, a lot of selection. You no longer have to choose between preserving your Dark Horse bonus and playing Look What I Found or Lucky. Uh, you get to enjoy the best of both worlds, which I think is, uh, is fantastic. Now, that said, uh, On Your Own has a, uh, significant, a uh, significant drawback and that you must discard uh, it if you control an asset that takes up an ally slot. Cards that take up the ally slot are among the most powerful cards in the game, so that is a huge ask. Besides uh, awesome special abilities, allies come with health and sanity, both of which are extremely valuable in their own right. Now, it's uh, worth noting here that uh, Duke does not take up an ally slot, so you can play on your own in an Ashcan Pete deck. It's also worth noting that uh, putting on your own into your deck doesn't mean you can't play allies, but uh, playing allies and on your own is going to create some conflict that uh, you are going to need to, na to navigate. Ultimately, you're going to have to consider whether navigating that conflict is worth it in the long run. And uh, even if you limit or forego allies altogether, there are some scenarios that will give you an ally that will take up that ally slot, which would discard uh, on your own in the process. That would be a, uh, a huge setback if you were not prepared for it. One of those scenarios that comes to mind is uh, Echoes of the Past, of course, where you, uh, you get handed the uh, Librarian. Uh, there are other uh, scenarios in the Forgotten Age cycle as well where you can end up with uh, Ichtaka or Alejandro Vela, respectively, uh, and both of those will take up your ally slot. So a, a card like On Your Own starts to look a lot less appealing. So with that in mind, let's take a, a closer look at some of the survivor allies and their relationship uh, to On Your Own. For example, if you're uh, playing Aquina, you uh, probably constructed your deck in such a way to leverage her uh, special ability. She's really not the type of, an, of ally that you simply stick in your deck and uh, hope for the best. She's going to play an integral part to, to how your deck functions. So uh, a card like On Your Own is probably not the best choice in this case whether you're playing uh, a Dark Horse uh, deck or no. The same is true for an ally uh, such as Yodel from uh, the Forgotten Age Deluxe Expansion. Yodel tends to appear in one specific deck, and that's an Ashcan Pete build that uh, uses Yodel to, abu uh, to abuse the desperate skills that were released in Echoes of the Past. 
Here's an example of that deck uh, that was built by Doobies over at uh, Arkham DB. You can see it's got uh, 15 skill cards. It does play uh, Dark Horse as well, but it only has uh, four events. Now, Yaddle is, is critical to how this deck functions, so there's really no point to playing uh, on your own in it. Uh, as I as I pointed out, the deck also plays Dark Horse, but there are only four events, two of which are free. So again, uh, on your own is uh, on on the outs in this particular deck. Now, Peter Sylvester is one of those allies I would almost consider to be uh, non-negotiable. I play him in a lot of my Survivor decks, and he has saved my bacon uh, more times than I can count. He uh, ranks among the best cards in the game for a reason, because he uh, really does an amazing job of shoring up an investigator's sanity. Investigators uh, such as Ashcan, Pete, Silas, Marsh, and the uh, latest addition to the class, uh, Rita Young, who will appear in uh, the Circle London, all have a sanity value of 5, which uh, really doesn't leave a lot of room for error. One uh, rotting remains uh, is a significant threat uh, to these types of investigators, and uh, Peter Sylvester can certainly help them weather the, st weather the storm if they happen to uh, blow their skill test. Now, uh, when I played the uh, Return to the Night of the Zealot campaign with uh, Silas Marsh, I did take a long, hard look at On Your Own. Ultimately, I uh, decided to stick with Peter Sylvester, and I uh, don't really regret the decision. Turning off uh, Dark Horse temporarily in order to save some resources so I could play events uh, was a pain, but uh, I felt uh, much more confident about my chances uh, completing that uh, campaign with Peter Sylvester guarding my back. That uh, brings us to the aforementioned Madame Labranche. Now, I've seen some very uh, compelling arguments online from players uh, such as Motux who argue that Madame Labranche is a better choice than on your own in a Dark Horse build. If you have no resources, Labranche can grab you one during the uh, player window at the start of your upkeep phase. If you take a resource later that phase, uh, you can start your next turn with two resources, which is enough to play the vast majority of Survivor events. You could even do this uh, during your turn for that matter, since uh, gaining re a resource with Madame Labranche is a free triggered ability. If you gain one resource from her and then one from an action, you're good to play uh, whichever event you need. You can also use Madame Labranche to draw a card during uh, any player window, which uh, is another big bonus uh, to having her. Finally, she's got that two health and two sanity, which uh, is also extremely valuable. On Your Own, by comparison, is a, a much more narrow card. Sure, you get to play a one survivor event for free every round, but uh, you don't get the resource generation, the card draw, or the health and sanity, and you're giving up your ally slot. So uh, when you look at uh, On Your Own from that perspective, it uh, doesn't seem like a very good deal at all. Now, I've talked a lot about playing uh, On Your Own in Dark Horse builds, but there's nothing stopping you from playing it in other deck archetypes as well. Survivors have very few ways to generate extra resources besides taking an action or playing cards like Emergency Cash from the Corset or Take Heart from Heart of the Elders. So any card that lets them save two resources per round is uh, going to be very welcome indeed, especially if you're playing a lot of events. Now, I can't think of a deck offhand that uh, really does that. I know Wendy Adams tends to play a lot of events because uh, they synergize with uh, Wendy's Amulet. So uh, On Your Own might find a home in that style of deck. That said, uh, Wendy can play a, an ally like Leo DeLuca, and I think I'd much rather have Leo in my corner uh, than confront a scenario uh, on my own. I think On Your Own is uh, one of those fascinating cards because it, it pairs a very good ability with a significant drawback, and that makes uh, players really have to think hard about... Uh, whether to include uh, this type of card in their deck. If you're playing a, a deck with a lot of events, On Your Own has the potential to save you quite a few resources if you can get it down early enough. Survivors don't have a lot of ways to generate resources, so the savings could be significant. However, handicapping your ally slot is a lot to ask. I mean, that's a lot to ask. And personally, I believe that uh, On Your Own's drawback is uh, really simply too great uh, for most decks whether they're playing Dark Horse or not. Now, perhaps there is an Ashcan Pete build that will like uh, On Your Own uh, because he does have an ally in play in Duke, so he is not so worried about uh, that ally slot. He's already got one. 
Or perhaps we'll see another survivor investigator down the road who relies on, on events to get the job done, in which case uh, on your own may be worth a, a second look. I don't think it's I don't think you're you're making a mistake if you put on your own in your deck, but you've I, before you do, I think you really need to determine whether it's worth uh, sacrificing that uh, ally slot for. And uh, personally, I'm not convinced that it is. That's going to do it for my review of the Mystic and Survivor cards in the City of Archives. Crystalline Elder Sign provides skill bonuses across the board. However, I'm not sure whether there is an investigator, at least a mystic investigator, who can take advantage of them. Most mystics and many mystic cards focus exclusively on willpower, so the Crystalline Elder Sign seems like an odd choice for this class, since cheaper willpower options are available. Now, Crystalline Elder Sign may find a home in off-class mystics, but it does cost three experience points, which uh, means there are very few investigators who are going to be able to take advantage of it, since the uh, the threshold is you, most uh, investigators have to they only get to take up to level two cards in their off uh, in their off class. Sacrifice, on the other hand, is a great choice for uh, mystic decks that are looking to squeeze a few more cards and resources out of their assets. Many uh, mystic assets are temporary in that they have uh, limited charges or uh, you need to get rid of them before they uh, do you harm. So uh, being able to recycle those assets once they've outlived their usefulness is uh, very good indeed. Meanwhile, you've got uh, On Your Own, which gives investigators the option of playing most survivor events for free. That is really good, although you are essentially giving up your ally slot to do it, which is a rough with a capital R. You will need to take a, 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 a think a really long, hard look at your what your deck is trying to do before uh, you decide whether to uh, to take a scenario on your own. Again, I think maybe there there could be an Ashcan Pete build that uh, that likes it, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have a uh, deck list to uh, to share with you. Let me know. That's uh, that's it for the uh, the City of Archives. There are only eight cards. Let me know in the comments what you uh, think of the pack and uh, some of the cards, and uh, you can look forward to the uh, reviews for the final two packs in the uh, cycle, uh, the Descent to uh, Yoth as well as Shattered Aeons. I'm also hoping to uh, squeeze out a look at uh, the one of the new one or both of the new investigators that were released uh, announced recently by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, those being Carolyn Fern and uh, Rita Young. I know Carolyn has been out for a while. Uh, there are playthroughs. I believe the Twisted Tentacle Inn has done a playthrough of Rita, or sorry, not Rita, but uh, Carolyn through uh, parts of uh, the Forgotten Age cycle. But uh, Rita is uh, is uh, totally unknown, so uh, I'd like to take a look at her and see what uh, she offers the Survivor class. So stay tuned for that. That's going to do it for my review. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me or you have any questions about the game, you can reach me at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.